Hello Dolby Productions here, uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on all the effects in Sony Vegas. Uh, there's quite a lot to go through and I want to make this video into 10 minutes so I can get it onto YouTube. So I'm going to go through them quite quickly and if I don't know what an effect is and I've never used it before, then I'll just be honest and say that I haven't used it. Uh, I suggest you watch the keyframing tutorial before this one because I'm going to be keyframing effects and show what you can do. Okay, I got a clip in the project media, I'll just use that kill catastrophe again. Let's get to a good point in it. Okay, effects, noise. Uh this basically just grains your video just like when your TV's out of sync. So you you can just turn the level up, just keyframe it. You you might want a bit of noise. I don't think it looks that nice as an effect, so I generally haven't really used it at all. Uh you might want someone crackling though if you've masked them out. But that's about it. Uh, black and white. Very self explanatory, this really. Put it on, makes your video black and white. It's got a point between 0 and 1. But you can keyframe it if you want it to go into black and white or come into colour at any point. Black and white used a lot in vids. Uh, black restore. Now, I have used this. I used this in Mine Analysis trailer. But I used it as a transition. So you can see the the black just kind of as it says black restore into the clip, so and eventually it will just disappear. So I've keyframed it before, so it will just crumble away, and that that looks pretty nice. I tend to overuse that, but it's alright. Uh, borders, this you can make a widescreen with that is a border. This is the border I'll be using next. This trailer, uh, it just just blends around, it looks quite nice. Sometimes easier than a widescreen, just makes it stand out from other videos. Uh, brightness and contrast. Uh, obviously, just boot brightness in your clip. If you want to flash, then I wouldn't use the flash transition generally because that just the whole clip lights up and you can't see what's going on. But if you just put this up to 2.5 or something and then just nudge it down afterwards, just double click it, it'll go back to zero. And then when you play it, it just flashes in it just looks quite neat and you can still see what's going on unlike the transition uh, broadcast I've never used that before to be honest if someone can tell me what it does it'd be useful never seems to do anything to my clips though uh, bump map now I don't actually like the bump but it does give a very stylish spotlight to clip see and uh, you can change the focus on it and the intensity which is nice but the bump that's what the bump does to it. It's just kind of emboss sort of effect, which I'll get into later. But I don't like it. It looks horrible. But the spotlight's actually quite nice. You can just keyframe it around, make it flash and stuff. The quality. You can move it around just by grabbing this thing. You just keyframe the spotlight. It, I've used it in other vids, not not Halo montages, but it it should be used really. Uh, channel blend. Some color correctors here. Never really used any of the channel blend ones though, so I won't go into them. Chroma blur and chroma keying. Now this is if you're doing something called green screening, where you have you're walking in front of a background and you can put a spacey background or whatever, so it looks like you're walking through something which looks totally unrealistic. Uh, just type in green screening and you'll see what it is on YouTube. But I won't be able to do. It. I've never ever done any green screening, so I don't know what it's like. But I think that's what the two chroma things are used for. Uh, color balance. Now, color balance, color correctors. Uh, I generally use color balance more. It gives a boost green midtones or something. Just gives it a bit more of a green effect. If you can put that down, then it you can just makes it stand out. Just change the color of it. That's basically what all the color cor color correctors do in it as well. But color correctors usually only do one spot. The thing about the color balance is it does it to the whole video. Uh, let's skip all these then. Color curves, just more color correctors. Some of these look horrible actually. Infrared <laughs> looks dreadful. Uh, never use this. Oh, this is your emboss and your bump. That's why I've never used it because I hate that effect. But I've never really understood how to use it properly. Uh, cookie cutter. Only ever really use this to do borders with. Nothing major. I mean, they're horrible, just little triangles and stuff. You're not going to really use that. You can make them bigger, I don't know. You could probably do some transitions if you're doing something for kids, they like it, but that's about it. Uh, deform, 
another thing you can use uh, for widescreen is compress vertically or if you want to transition a clip out this is actually quite nice as well so you have the clip playing and then you want it to slowly close you just keyframe the amount and it'll just squeeze and eventually disappear but you can also just put that on as a widescreen like that uh, you, if you've watched the keyframe tutorial you know all about the diamonds and how you make it move uh, film effects uh, right I've, I use this a lot in Hazard's thing you see the graining and the tint but I generally didn't use that what I used to use is jitter turn the amount up and it gives it just a nice little shake as it's moving along it just looks pretty cool and I overuse that a lot in Hazard's touch but I look it, I thought it looked alright and then you've got just scratches you can add and all sorts so let's turn some scratches up there you go so now you've got got jitter in and just got some scratch marks on it just gives a little bit of an effect and you can still see the video playing I prefer the effects which don't do too much to the video because I always used to overuse effects and then people couldn't see what was actually happening in the clips and you don't want that happening uh, film grain is pretty much the same as film effects so you just, when it's like noise as well just grains your video out of it gushing blur probably the most used blur of the lot just look tidy use it for speeding up clips the blur keyframe it then you can transition it by turning this up just keyframe it if you want to transition in transition out uh, th that's another thing you can use most of these effects as transitions if you keyframe it probably see I've done a keyframe there without knowing what you don't accidentally put keyframes in that's what I kept doing so I kept messing around with this and then when you move stuff around you think you're on the first keyframe then it adds another one in and then you wonder why your video looks dreadful uh, let's go on to glow glow I used a lot if you put something like highlights in but you, you can mess around with these yourself I mean I, I made a preset this was what I use for my exercise all the time just kinda give it a snowy feel uh, transition it in so after a second put a keyframe in just turn the intensity right down so then you would have seen that just sort of entrance Just I use that a lot from a Christmas challenge, give it a little snowy feel for Christmas. Uh, oh, delete the clip. I've done that. Where was it? Gradient maps. These are color correctors as well, but I've used these before. I I like the set one. I think it looks real neat, but don't know, use it too much. You can overuse that, but it's good for like flashing. I use that in my analysis trailer as well when I got my stick at the end. Uh. HSL adjust. Right, if you're going to invert colours, people like to do this if they haven't really done it before. I think the invert looks very untidy. But if you are going to invert a clip for some reason, I use this one and not this one here, invert. Because that looks even worse, I think. You might want to do it for some reason, but I just wouldn't. I can't even see the screen, what's happening. Lens flare. Oh, you would have seen these. Okay, you can move your lens flare around like this, just with the little aimer, like you could with the bump map. Uh, you can put a tint on it as well, just change it around. And then keyframe it. You you often see a little flash through the middle of the camera, just through the aimer or something. It looks quite nice occasionally. Wouldn't overuse that though. People get bored of it fairly easily. Uh, levels. This is messing around with your types of light. So you can just increase the gamma, put the background down, just darken it, brighten it. But you got bright brightness and contrast for that, so I generally use that more. Okay, light rays. You use this a lot. You also got spotlights with it, which look quite nice. Can't not put a light on just so it does. Uh, just move the radius, and it will just stretch out a bit. And then as you play through the cliff, we'll just. And if you turn the strength and the sensitivity down, oh, and nudge it right up. Then you can mess around with. That's what the light rays are. That sort of effect. You'll see them used a lot when speeding up the clip. But this sort of thing, just mess around with the strength. People like to use them more, just pulse out a bit maybe to the music if you're syncing. Other than that, you just use them for speeding up clips generally.